Hey y'all, and welcome to Cyrus Homestead. I'm Zach. I'm Jen. There she is. And today we are doing something that we absolutely love to do that we do not get to do very often. Uh, we are cooking over the fire, and we're using a lot of cast iron today because we went down to uh, Gatlinburg a few weeks back, and they have a lodge store there, and they have all kinds of discounted stuff, and we love Dutch ovens. That's the one thing that we need more of. So we got us one, one with the lip, one with the feet, so you can cook with charcoal, which is something that we love to do. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, but first, we gotta season this bad boy. And our friends are back. Say hi. <laughs> so we have our Dutch cast iron here. Uh, this is a 10 inch, and like I said, it's got the lip, it's got the legs. Now Lodge will tell you that it's already seasoned, you can power on, I don't trust that stuff. So we're gonna rub it down really good with oil all over the entire thing, and then we're just gonna to toss it into the fire. Oh, you're fine. All right, we've got the whole thing completely oiled up. I'm just waiting for my fire to get nice and hot, and we're just gonna drop this bad boy in there. And when I mean hot, I don't mean this. I don't mean that you just got a good fire going. So we just started this. I want good, good coals. So I'm gonna let all this wood burn down to give me a nice hot coals, because that's what I want to set it in. Not this, just the fire. All right, we've got our pan all seasoned up. Now it's time to start cooking. So we're gonna do kind of a, I guess you'd call it like a braised short rib per se. Um, but first off, we're just gonna cut up an onion, get it in there, and then we'll load up our ribs. And then we'll do all of our seasoning. So we loaded this bad boy up with a lot of ribs. They are cut off, or cut. They're not on the whole rack because we couldn't fit them in. I had our Appalachian barbecue rubs, some onions. And then we're gonna do an old American made yingling flight beer in there. Okay, so we got our 10 inch here. We're gonna go for 350. So what we're gonna be doing is putting seven coals on the bottom, 14 on top. However, this is a deeper one. So we're gonna add one more. We're gonna do 15 and eight. And I'll show you how to do that. All right, there you go, eight on the bottom. 15 on top and that is it folks that is just going to sit there and cook we'll keep an eye on it we do have our little tool here that helps you hook this so you can check it and you want to make sure that you have a dutch oven that has that ring because if you don't have that ring all the mash is going to fall right into your pot so this helps keep them up it's also a dutch uh, dutch oven with legs on it so that's why we can do it so it's not sitting directly on the coals so jen has a question for everyone do you know who invented the dutch oven with legs no put, not the legs the lid the lid so that right. you can put the coals on top put it down in the comments right now who don't invented <laughs> don't google it yet who invented the dutch oven lid with the lip yep. so i did want to clarify too these coals will give you about an hour so we're running about two hours on this food so once we get an hour and everything looks like to be completely gone We'll then add more briskets back. Yeah. You gonna go long? Are you videoing? I'm Say, gonna be on camera. Tell them everybody what your name is. Ridley. Ridley, not really. <laughs> Benny, get the ball back. <laughs> oh, close. Oh, that looking good. I'll go ahead and. Smells 
fantastic. I smell those onions. Whew, what a cool frosty morning we have this late April day. The aftermath of our campfire cooking. Um, but I wanted to kind of recap because we were just having a, like a really nice Sunday, but it was stuff that I really wanted to make sure that you all had. Um, Cause then I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to get the specifics out, but I wanted you to be able to see it. And with all that copyright music in the background, it was kind of hard to talk. So let's do that now. I'll tell you kind of the specifics of what we did um, and the importance of knowing how to do this. So specifically of what we were doing yesterday, those were beer bray short ribs. So we just had some short ribs that were hanging around. Um, not your favorite ribs to ever cook in the world. However, they're really good if done the right way. Um, and this is something that Jen and I have been doing for years, basically since we got married. Um, and all we did, we put the onions on the bottom, nice thick cut onions. This is gonna help you if you do get a little too hot because those onions will take the burn before the ribs will. So kind of keeps you in mind, but if done right, they're nice, tender, soft onions that are fantastic. Put the onions on, put our ribs on. You know, like I said, we use our Appalachian barbecue rub but put whatever seasonings that you want on there to give them nice and flavor. Fill it up, it doesn't have to be a single layer. You can fill that bad boy up like you're making a soup. Um, and then once you have it to the top, place another level of onions on the top of that. And then you're gonna put your favorite beer, pour it, one whole beer in there. Then you're gonna squirt some of your favorite barbecue sauce on top. And that's all you need to do to get it ready to be cooked. Whenever you're doing Dutch oven cooking um, and you're kind of doing this style, most food is cooked around 350. Now the biggest thing is it's gonna change depending on the size of your pot. So we had a 10 inch deep Dutch oven. So that uh, brought us up to 15 coals on the top, eight coals on the bottom. However, if you Google this and maybe if Jed can do this, uh, there's Dutch oven temperature gauges or Dutch oven temperature charts that you can see and it's gonna have it all listed out for you. We'll see how good Jed is if he just threw one over my face or not. Um, but just Google it and you can see exactly what it is, but it's good to start getting that memorized. I tell you, it's, it's fairly easy. One of the biggest things that you can remember is to double basically the size of your pot. So yeah, ours was a little bit more than 20, but it was close. You know, if you did 20, it probably would have been fine. The second piece to remember is those coals usually last you about an hour. Um, so if you're doing something like these, because we cooked them for about two and a half hours, you're gonna have to clean them all off, get all that little dust off there because they're not really pumping much heat anymore and then restock your coals. Uh, make sure that you are watching per coal because if you're doing this with actually firewood, which I like to do as well, you're using just the chunks of coal that fall off the wood, right? So you're gonna be putting some of those on there and that's gonna differ your heat a little bit, but just think about the size of a charcoal. The biggest thing with that though is it could go a little quicker. Those coals could burn down a little quicker so you might have to replace a little often. That's the fun part of this though. You get to experiment, you get to try. It's a lot of fun. One time I burnt those things. I opened that pot, it was so black. That I, was, I mean, it was not edible, it was crazy. Don't know what happened that time. I probably put the coals on too quick, but it's something that you're definitely gonna make mistakes. And it's just a lot of fun though to do in general because you're just getting better. And it's a really important skill to know. Distracted because I saw a bird in the greenhouse. Yep, there he is. Oh, and there's a cat, so even better. And that's a pretty little cardinal. Get out of here, guy. Hey, hey. <laughs> go on, go on. There you go. He's out of here. Well, now that I'm in here, that's a good sign. Looks like that little heater held strong and the frost didn't tear up anything. Thank goodness. All right, now that we saw the bird in the greenhouse incident, back to the importance of learning how to cook over a fire. It is hugely important. So I'm talking open face fire, like where you're just putting a grate over or you like what we did, we had taters and corn. So we had baked potato and corn that we put a little butter in, wrapped them in Reynolds wrap, threw them right in the coals of the fire. Now that is just kind of a guessing game, kind of touch it, fill it. It's more of that like cooking with your heart kind of thing um, to know when they're done. Usually they turn out perfect every time. Just don't put them directly on extremely hot coals because you're going to burn that side. But that's one important thing to learn, how to just wrap something up in Reynolds wrap and toss it into some coals and figure out how to cook that way. The second is open face cooking where you have an open fire or some open coals and you're putting a grate over top of it and cooking straight meat. You're cooking steaks on it, burgers, different stuff like that. The third is Dutch oven cooking to where you're making more soups or you're making these uh, kind of like a crock pot. Anything you'd put in a crock pot or an Instapot, that's what you would do this Dutch oven cooking for. Um, we've even made dump cakes in it, which is really cool. And the reason this is so important because if your electric goes out or if your gas no longer works and your stove doesn't work, and say you have a propane grill and your propane runs out, 
you gotta cook food, right? And it's gonna be over a fire. So it's better to know how to do this and so you're not just burning everything up and you're not just putting something on a stick and cooking a hot dog every day. Um, it's important to know this in case you needed to have the skill. The best part about this in the learning stage is it's a lot of fun to do. Enjoy a nice Sunday, enjoy a nice weekday, week night, whatever it is, and make sure that you're doing it with the kids. It's always fun. We roasted marshmallows and had s'mores afterwards, and it's a good environment to be in while you're gaining knowledgeable skills for if you ever needed them. And we, like I said, we have cast iron at the wazoo. It's one of those things that we like to collect. Um, and so it's stuff that we just always like to cook on and having that fire cooking. So make sure that you're getting some cast iron, Make sure that you have kind of a, a ring or some setups to do these fires with. Um, there's some magical ones out there. I would love one day to build me a, a an outdoor fire kitchen kind of thing. But just make sure that you're having fun with it. But also understand that it's not just fun. Like this is for a skill set that you need in this lifestyle. And so make sure that you're playing around with it and practicing with it. The best part is you're probably gonna get addicted to it because it's a lot of fun. So then y'all, we have a big, big busy week this week. Oh, I, gotta, I gotta get a shot of that. The, the, the fog or the, I guess the steam from the heat from the sun hitting on the frosty grass has really just got it all nice and steamy over there. It's very pretty. Um, but other than that, we got a really busy week this week ahead of us. A lot of Airbnb guests, um, a lot of stuff that we're doing around the farm that you all will be here to see. But I hope you all have a great week. Remember, learning one more thing at a time. Do something. Make sure that you're doing something and all will be well. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button. We love y'all. Bye.